Let's see, we are recording. Yep. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of ServiceNow Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to solve a problem from the community where someone had made an action button on the service portal that looks something like this. And when you press that button, it changes the, the state and the incident to resolved. And when that happens, they would like the button to be removed. And as you know, when you do this, normally the state will change automatically without you having to reload the page. But as is configured at the moment, it doesn't happen. So if I press this button, you can see it's been resolved. The state has changed, but the action button still is there. Now, this episode won't show you how to create the action button like this. I am going to show you. I have actually just taken an example from the service portal UI page. I'll put the URL at the bottom of the YouTube video, but I basically just pasted in all of this tree to get this nice little button once. So the things we're going to do is to make sure that this button will pop up and hide depending on the state on this ticket. So let's go and look. So this is how it looks out of the box. And one way to try to figure out how to do this is to look at other widgets that does what you want. So when we look at this one, we notice that the state did actually change here. So what we can do is control right click, choose widget in editor. It will load here. And basically the magical thing is the SPU to record watch. This is how you can do to make your widget watch the tables and see if something is changing. At this one, it will update the scope. It has the table here in the data table where you can find data table here, get the records table name. And it also adds a query for which records it's supposed to be looking for. And that's good because you can have performance issue if you have too many record watch watching the whole table without any queries or conditions. So what we will do is we will steal this one. And good to know is that you will need to have this up here as well. So let's take this one. Let's go back. And let's just put it here. And we'll go up and add scope and SPUtil. Just see the, the lower the cases and the big U just to make that correct as well. As you can see here, we would like to have the table name in here. And actually this example fetches the table name and the sys ID is actually fetching that as well. So we don't need to change this one to get it to work. Now let's see if we can see that something is changing. So what we can do is down here, we can see that it's fetching GR, it's getting the, the object of that record. So let's say that data.state equals GR get value state. I will save it. And let's go back to this form and reload the widgets. Now a cool thing to do is now this is in Swedish, but you probably have more tools and tools for programmers, and then you get the console. What you can do is you can control right click, log the console, scope data. And then you have this nice little thing. You can see all the different values it has in the data field. You have state six, you get the CSID and the table. Now what we will do is we will go into the record itself and we will change it to in progress, save. In progress, save. Yeah, and then we'll go back to our form. We can see, oh, it changed in progress. Let's control right click again. And without reloading the page, we can see that state has changed it too. So we got all the information we need. Let's move that over there and let's go back to the widget. 
So what do we want to do? Well, we want to hide. We can take away the cancel button because we don't want to have that one. So let's call uh, something called show resolve. And we'll say that if data.state isn't equal to six, we want that button to show. So we'll say it's true. And if that condition isn't true, we would like to have the value to be false. Like that. And on the bottom, we then do engage if equals to, and we just say c dot data dot show resolve and save. Let's remove the info. Informations and let's reload it. So it's in progress. The cancel should be gone and we have the button. I'll press that one. We will solve the ticket. And you can see the button disappear because now it's in state resolved. Meaning that if I go in here and change the state, this is kind of weird. I have to say it twice, wonder why and go back and it's loading and pa -pa, there comes the little button again. Now to give you something extra, what we can do is let's copy this button and let's remove the client script because we don't need that. And do it like this and let's say that we have something called reopen instead. And in that we will send in reopen and call it reopen instant instead. Now what this will do in the client script it will send in reopen and then this variable will be reopen. This service script will run it will come here oh it's an input and it has action. If that action is resolved it will do all that but Let's change that one to reopen. What we can do is just to copy what this does. We'll change it. I think I actually just want it to be like this. We'll remove that one. In this case, we probably would like to have a mandatory comment or something like that, but just so you can understand how it works. So we got the action to reopen, and then of course we need this one and we probably must say if data.state equals to six then we'd like that button to be true otherwise we'd like to hide it. Save. Let's go back to the ticket. Reload. Now it's in state in progress. Let's resolve it. And suddenly we got the button called reopen. Probably put that in another color so the users doesn't get confused because the, the wording is pretty much the same as well. Let's reopen it. And it's turned back to result. So that is how you can easily create a widget that will be responsive when it happens stuff to the record. And this is the magic line that does it all. Okay. Thanks for today. Bye-bye.